Okay, uh, we've got what should be a fairly short uh, slide today. Here for, uh, this is slide number nine, um, nine out of ten. Uh, talking about the Soviet standoff here, the, the Cold War, the standoff with the Soviet Union. Um, and we will start with uh, countries picking and choosing sides here. Okay. We have talked about NATO before, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Um, and if you look at the map down here at the bottom, all these countries in any shade of blue, the light blue, dark blue, whatever, um, those are all NATO countries. Okay? Uh, it goes all the way from the United States, Canada here, uh, all the way as far uh, east as Turkey. Okay? Most of Western Europe falls under NATO as well. Opposing NATO are the Soviet bloc countries, and they are known as the Warsaw Pact. Warsaw being the capital of Poland, uh, where all these meetings took place to, to set this up. But the Warsaw Pact would be all of the red or pink countries here. Okay? Um, most of them joined at the same time, the dark red ones. And then in uh, 56, you get East Germany right there. So you got NATO, blue versus Warsaw Pact. These are essentially the two sides in the Cold War. It's the United States versus the Soviet Union but they each have little helpering countries as well. Okay. Um, in the Middle East, let's look at what's going on there, specifically in um, Iran. Okay. Now, if you are unfamiliar with your Middle Eastern geography, Iran is this country right there, okay? and then I'm dotting there. That's Iran. Notice it borders the Soviet Union okay, in a couple of places. Um, the United States... Um, well, how do I say this? The government of Iran began to resent the influence that Western oil companies were having on its country. Okay? The government didn't like how much power these oil companies had. Um, so the United States in 1953 will, the, the CIA will help engineer a coup that overthrows the government of Iran. And instead of traditional radical uh, Muslims in charge, we put in charge uh, a young man who was educated in the West. He was uh, educated in Britain and the United States. He is known as the Shah of Iran. Okay? Now, Shah is just a political title. It's like saying president or prime minister, or king, something like that. Uh, so he is the new ruler of Iran. He's very young and very pro-West, which is going to be great for the United States here in the short run, but it's going to build a lot of resentment in the long run. So this is going to cause us some problems down the road. Um, let's continue with this oil theme and uh, the formation of an organization called OPEC. Okay. OPEC stands for the Organization of Petroleum. Petroleum is another word for oil. The Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. These are countries whose oil is their main export. Most of their economy, most of their money um, comes from oil, okay? Um, initially, okay, in 1960, when OPEC is formed, okay, um, five countries would get together and join, okay? Uh, you don't have to know these, but Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, and Venezuela, of all places, in South America. So you get four Middle Eastern countries and one South American country. Um, OPEC is extremely powerful. It was in 1960 when it was founded. It still is today because OPEC sets the price of oil. Uh, they determine how much you have to pay for a barrel of oil uh, if you are a country anywhere in the world. So OPEC holds a lot of power. They even have their own little flag there. If you can see, there's an O, a P, 
an E and a C. Um, so they set the price of oil. They determine how much gasoline is going to cost, heating oil, everything. Okay? Uh, very powerful then, still very powerful today. Okay? That gets us to uh, 1956. Politics happens again. And another presidential election. This one will be a repeat of 1952. The same two candidates. The Democrats will nominate Adlai Stevenson again. Um, it's Stevenson with a V, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. -E -E and the Republicans will re-nominate uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Eisenhower will win another easy election because the economy is booming. And if you've learned nothing else, hopefully, you've learned that people vote with their wallet. So uh, Eisenhower wins again four more years. Now, let's make uh, our, our first mentions here of the space race. Now, let's clear up any misconceptions here. The space race okay, is not a race to get to space. No, even though it's called that, that's not what it is. It's a race to get to the moon. Okay? But that takes many steps along the way. It starts with the launching of the first satellite called Sputnik 1. Okay? Sputnik 1. The Soviets launch a satellite. October 1957. It completely catches the world by surprise. Uh, and here's a picture of Sputnik right there, okay? Nobody in the United States, heck, nobody in the world outside of the Soviet Union thought the Soviets were anywhere near being capable of launching a satellite, but they do. Um, Americans go into this panic. Oh, my God, the Soviets have a satellite up there. They're taking pictures of us. They're watching us, everything we do. It didn't have anything to do with that. It's a communication satellite, for one thing. It just sends out radio signals. It doesn't take pictures. But the fact that they beat us to space was a huge embarrassment to the United States government. So not only are they the first to launch a satellite, they're also the first to launch a living being into space. It was a dog named Laika aboard Sputnik 2. Now up here in the top right, there you see Laika. Uh, Laika was put into this little satellite and blasted off into space. She had all kind of electrodes hooked up to her. They wanted to test the effects of um, a, a space launch and space travel on a living being. Well, what they discovered is that it kills a living being. Uh, Laika had a heart attack and died. Uh, gave her life for Mother Russia, came back to Earth. They recovered the body. Laika was a national hero and buried and all that. Uh, state funeral, great hero. But uh, Laika would be the first living being in the space. So the Soviets have won the first couple legs of the space race. Right? When that happens, Eisenhower orders the government to create NASA. Right? It's America's space agency. It's the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA. Right? Their job is to get us to space, to build bigger, better rockets and get us to space. And they will. In February 1958, uh, four months after the Soviets do it, the United States launches its first satellite. It's called Explorer 1. Uh, the United States' first satellite, Explorer 1. So we're still trailing the Soviets here. Uh, in the space race, and we'll lose most all of the early legs of the space race here. It's going to be a long time before we catch up. But we do manage to achieve one first. Right? We, send, we are the first to send a living being into space and bring it back alive. We launch two monkeys named Abel and Baker, because A and B are the designation, the military designations for the first two letters of the alphabet. Um, so Abel and Baker are two monkeys. And here you see a picture of Baker right there. A little bitty monkey, because there you see the guy's arm. He's sitting on his hand. A little bitty monkey. But uh, we launch Abel and Baker. They go into space, and they come back alive. That's our one great achievement here early on in the space race. Right? Now, the fact that we're getting our butts kicked here in the space race uh, prompts the government 
to pass what's called the NDEA, stands for National Defense and Education Act. National Defense and Education Act. Um, it guaranteed student loans to needy college students. If you wanted to go to college and needed some money, you could apply for a loan from the government. As long as you studied either science or foreign language. Science because we got to win the space race. Foreign language because the CIA needs more spies in the Cold War. So if you studied science or foreign language, you could get loans, very cheap loans, uh, from the government through the National Defense and Education Act.